Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your guy Realistic and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and in this video I'm going to show you how I made a diffusion slash absorption panel off some leftover materials that I just had sitting around the house and maybe you'll get some inspiration to build your own like this or something similar to this but first if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel that way you can stay up to date with our latest videos tutorials and product launches and also you'll have tips and tricks that will show up in your mobile feed as well and also if you find the video helpful hit that like button because believe it or not it helps the channel grow and it helps out the algorithm quite a bit also, Oracle and I do have two online mixing courses available right now for you to be able to join and be a part of. We have the Art of Beat Mixing and the Art of Vocal Mixing. Both are packed with hours worth of content and several videos in there for to give you everything that you need to know when it comes to mixing and mastering your beats and your vocals. So I'll put the link to both courses in the description below. All right, so now let's dive into these absorption panels and diffusion panels and why I made them. And I'll show you what the end result is right here. So the end result is actually, this is what I ended up making right here. And I'm gonna show you how later in the video how I actually made these, so we'll go over it and everything. But these right here were some absorption diffusion panels that were sent over to me to do a review on. I got a pack of 12 of them. So the person that actually reached out to me, it, their Instagram handle is buildkodo, and I'll put the their tag down below. But the actual company that makes these is Neatotech, and you can get these on Amazon. So I'll put a link in the description below as far as where you can get these. Uh, so they wanted me to do a review on them, and you guys already know that anytime I do a review, I'm going to give you guys my honest answer and opinion on them. And as far as these individually, these individually are not going to do too much for your studio. I think they look good aesthetically, which is why I wanted to figure out a way to utilize them. Now on the website or on the Amazon uh, product page, these are going to say soundproofing uh, material. These are not soundproofing materials. They're not going to make your studio soundproof. If you actually want to make your studio soundproof, there's actually a lot that goes into it. It's time consuming. It's expensive. It's what I did with this room. But uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually build a room inside of a room with some space in between the two rooms. So basically a box inside of a room. Uh, that's the first thing that you're gonna wanna do. And then inside the framing, before you hang up all the drywall or woodwork, you're gonna wanna build honeycomb filters, stuff everything with rock wool or 703. I used rock wool and then put everything up. And then afterwards, once you got all your drywall or your woodwork up, then what you're gonna do is you're going to hang up a bunch of panels and stuff. So that's how you would actually make your room soundproof. Stuff like this isn't gonna work. Even things like 703 three just hung up on the wall isn't going to work those are all absorption now as far as absorption these also won't do the greatest job you're going to want something more like 703 or rock wool to actually do the absorption because those two materials are really dense really thick and what they're going to do is they're going to absorb the frequencies all the way down to 200 hertz and all the way up to 20,000 hertz so they're going to do quite a good job when it comes to absorption now, as far as something like this or foam, which I always, you've seen a lot of my videos, I'm really against foam. But uh, when it comes to those materials, they're not going to absorb too much, especially in the lower frequencies and the mid-range. They're better with the 1 to 2K as far as the frequency spectrum. And the thing that they do the best job with is actually helping reflections off the wall when it comes to uh, reverbs or flutter echoes. I will say that they, they will give you an improvement in that. But it's a lot cheaper to go with 703 or something like that. However, these particular things here, they're made out of, uh, I think, polyester, uh, not foam. So a little bit better material. But these are pretty affordable. If you go on their Amazon, these are actually, uh, you get 12 of them for $15. So these are actually pretty affordable. Not like foam where it's overpriced and doesn't actually do anything. And so again, when I looked at this, I, I really like the perforated look here with the, the graded kind of design in there. And I thought, okay, so these aren't going to do too much. I knew instantly when I saw them, they weren't going to do too much as far as the sound. But I said, aesthetically, these actually look pretty dope. Let me figure out a way to be able to use these and utilize them in my studio because I do like the aesthetics of them. And so that's what I did. I was I custom my I custom designed a box that could work as absorption 
and something that could also work as the fusion with a bunch of leftover parts that I had. Uh, and that's kind of important too. You could go down to Home Depot or Lowe's, by the way, uh, all this material that I used on here, you will find, including the Rockwell. You have to buy a big bag of it though. They don't just sell small pieces like this. Big bag of it's like uh, 50 bucks and you get 12 uh, panels in there. So if you're building the studio and you're gonna build a bunch of like panels and stuff, um, that's when I suggest making something like this. Um, and then what you can do then is just use leftover scrap pieces. And that's actually, this whole design is literally leftover scrap pieces from the rock wool to the framing, which is why you see I got two separate pieces here. Uh, I know that it's not as uh, aesthetically cool looking as this, but the thing is, is this gets hung up on the wall like this. So you never see the back anyways. Uh, and so I didn't, I had one piece that was long enough and the other piece wasn't. So I just needed uh, another piece. And I figured since nobody was, is gonna see it, I don't wanna go out and buy new wood. Uh, so that's what I went ahead and did. I just used all scrap wood, including the uh, board in the middle here was was literally all stuff that I just had laying around the studio. Uh, I usually have a lot of stuff laying around just because, you know, I custom built this entire room from the base traps to the panels to everything you see in the wall to uh, even the drywall uh, and the framing, everything that you see in this room and that you don't see in the room, all the stuff behind the walls, uh, I custom built myself. So I usually have some scrap wood laying around. So if you have that, I suggest using that because that's kind of the point of what I'm suggesting to do with this is if you got stuff laying around your house or your studio, maybe figure out a way to use it and make something cool and get kind of like a custom thing that nobody else would really have in their studio can give you a really cool vibe and really set your studio apart from other places. And so that's what I did. Uh, if you don't have scrap wood laying around, you could definitely go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you'll be able to find the stuff. Everything is going to be really affordable. Uh, I built this whole box. Well, technically, I built this whole box for free because the panels were sent to me to review and I had all the uh, wood laying around from scrap pieces. Uh, however, uh, between the actual... Uh, absorption panels if you were to buy these and then uh the pieces of wood you'll make this for less than thirty dollars and be able to hang it up and get going and uh foam costs more than that and is not as effective so you can build this pretty affordable again homes and uh, uh lowe's and home depot will be the uh two places as far as the national chain that are most likely going to be in your area if you're from the midwest you'll also be able to find all this material at a place called menards According to their jingle, you will save big money when you shop Menards, so maybe you'll find better deals there. I'm not sure. Sometimes the deals are better, sometimes they're not, but uh, it's worth checking in there. Sometimes the thing about Menards, though, is their selection is a little bit wider than what you may find at a Home Depot or Lowe's, so that's always good to know, especially when it comes to wood and lumber. I feel like they have a lot more uh, selection and stuff there. So, yeah, all I did from there was I just glued uh, these panels on there, built the frame thought it looked really nice uh what i would look at this at though don't look at this as well why would i buy this if um you know i gotta custom build it don't look at this piece as an end all be all look at it the way that you would look at your rock wool or your 703 panels now when you buy a bag of rock wool or you buy a box of 703 panels that's not your end all be all right so if we come over here and look at some of the stuff that i got built in here we got some 703 hung up on the walls and then we got some rock wool in the corner. Now you can see right here that that's not all that I had to buy. I had to buy some fabric. I had to buy some wood frames, as you see there. So there was some material that I had to buy. So kind of look at this. If you wanted to go ahead and buy this, look at it like that to where, okay, this is a uh, piece here that I'm going to want to add to, um, that I'm going to buy and then build around it, just like the 703 or the rock wool. So yeah, again, those are from a place called Needle Tech. Uh, I'm just doing a, a review um, basically because I wanted to show you guys how I um, built the stuff and, uh, and you can customize your own. And since they were nice enough to send me a free pack over, figured I'd do the review. However, uh, you should put in the comments, man. Try to uh, convince them to give me an affiliate link because if you guys are going to buy this, uh, it'd be cool if I had an affiliate partnership. Uh, they don't have an affiliate partnership going right now, but be cool if they had it. Also, another thing I was thinking about, if you guys are interested, 
I was thinking that maybe myself and Needle Tech could actually team up and do a giveaway for you guys. They don't know that I'm saying that or suggesting it, so I'm actually hoping that we as a community can put the pressure on, because uh, I think it'd be kind of cool if uh, we could actually give a few of these away, because uh, I think that it could uh, really help you guys out, and also think it could bring more awareness to uh, Needle Tech, because uh, as you guys know, we got a lot of support over here at soundoracle.net and Realistic Productions, so that'd be pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is we're about to go on my workshop, and I'm gonna show you how I built this thing and uh everything that you need to do we'll do a quick little time lapse so you guys don't have to sit through and watch me saw for like 20 straight minutes and stuff like that but uh all you're really going to need for this is you're going to need some type of saw if you don't have a saw at home the really cool thing is is you can have uh home depot or lowe's or menards they all have uh uh ability to cut the wood for you you're just going to want to go in there with everything measured out uh beforehand uh, and then just kind of give them the measurements and they'll be able to cut the stuff for you. Uh, obviously you can build any size that you want. I know this is a, a really small design here. Um, you'll see at the end of the video where I hung this up that this particular one needed to be small because I had a large four foot panel hanging on the wall and I wanted to get a little bit higher to the ceiling and it was about a foot off that I, I needed another foot. So th this was perfect because these are uh, one foot by one foot as far as these uh, squares. I go one foot this way, one foot that way. So I put two of them together so I could get two feet in length, which was perfect because my 703 panels are four feet high and two feet in length. So that was perfect and because uh, it lined up with that. And so that's all I did there. But you could you could stack these up because you get 12 of them. You could make a whole panel where it's like 12 by 12 and you got a whole thing. Maybe that could be your backdrop or something like that. Or you can make a few of them, make a couple three by four feet or whatever you want to do. Um, so you don't have to necessarily make this size, but again, this size was uh, perfect for me. So that's why I went ahead and did that. All right, so now we're out in the little workshop here or a little corner of my garage, whatever you want to call it. We're going to cut up these boards real quick and some of this lumber. So I got a, a long board here that I had left over. And so all I'm going to do actually to, to measure this out, uh, normally I would use a, a ruler or something like that, but I'm just going to actually just set this right on here like that and just cut right there so I know exactly the how even it is. And I'll do the same thing with uh, these wood boards over here. But yeah, let's go ahead and cut these up and uh, get these in place. And then we'll actually build it right here in this garage and then we'll head back to the studio. Another thing too, before we dive in, I do wanna point out, if you're gonna be working with stuff like this, especially with the rock wool that we're gonna stuff in the back, I do recommend gloves, uh, also long sleeves if you if you have some. I know I'm not wearing them right now, but um, this because I'm only lightly working with the rock wool. And then maybe some safety glasses too, especially with saws and stuff like that. Stuff can get into your eyes and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff all chopped up.
All right, so now we have our wood frame built and we have the diffuser, little absorption panels on there. And then we have it stuffed in the back with some rock wool and sealant to protect our lungs. And uh, you may have noticed what I did was I used some wood glue to actually put the absorption panels on there. You can find this at Home Depot or Lowe's or you can even find this at Walmart or something like that. I use wood glue because it holds really, really well. Plus I am working with wood glue. But the thing about wood glue is once it's on there, you are committed. This is a marriage. It is pretty much impossible to rip uh, stuff off, especially wood. You're not gonna be able to make wood be pull apart when you're using the wood glue. So that's why I wanted to use that because it, it works really well. And then I just used a brush. So instead of a, a thin strip, I can get a little bit of a wider kind of feel to it. And then for now, what I'm going to do for the next two hours is just let these uh, weights rest on there so they can get, you know, pushed down and locked in with the glue. You could also use clamps. We do have clamps in the garage. However, I found for this uh, for this box, the way that our clamps are set up, it kind of wanted to tilt and kind of fall down on me. So I'm just using these uh, workout weights that I had right there. You know, as long as I have something that you can put on pressure, you can even put a tote that has like a bunch of stuff in it that weighs a lot whatever you need to do to put some weight on it to put the pressure down. And then afterwards, since you kind of have some sawdust and stuff like that floating around, I just recommend uh, taking a vacuum hose and uh, just vacuuming off the uh, excess sawdust that's gonna be on those black absorbent panels. And that's it. So let's go head back to the studio and finish up there. All right, guys, so you got to see the whole process of why we made it, and then you got to see the process of me actually making it and you got to watch a super boring time lapse with one of the uh loops that we use from oracle's site just playing in the background but you at least got to see the process which was really cool and then uh yeah so let's just kind of go in and talk about uh what the design was uh you saw that we had to glue these on there i used the wood glue and so basically the design is we got some type of uh polyester absorption here going into some perforated stuff which is really great for diffusion and so then it goes into the wood and since we have the the perforated at different size and then we got this one going uh vertical and this way is going horizontal we got some different ways to spread out the frequencies so we actually do have some diffusion going on here and uh wood is such a great thing to use for diffusion i think it's one of the best sounding uh reflection reflective materials out there uh, i had a conversation with my uh, roommate engineer amon jackson about why we think that wood is such a great reflective material and one of the things that we thought of is uh it's one of the most natural sources and something that humans have uh, been around for you know thousands of years that we're used to hearing this reflective uh, material even being outside with trees and stuff like that so maybe that's why it's such a great reflective material so it goes into the wood and we got a nice sturdy frame around here uh you're not going to be able to rip this down which is really great and then we got some rock wool stuffed in here i used the sealant you don't have to use the sealant especially if it's going to go on the walls but a lot of you, you guys have seen uh on my instagram and youtube uh the recent events of how i landed up in the hospital i ended up go getting in there with a pretty serious uh lung disease and infection which eventually led to a collapsed lung and we're thinking it was actually me working with this material the rock wool and the 703 so much that uh, it got caught in my lungs and eventually led that so because of that i've been extra cautious but anyways you don't have to do that but i put the sealant in there after i stuff with the rock wool so not only is this thing going to work really well for some absorption but we got uh we got pretty good here we got a, a couple inches of absorption in here too so this thing is actually gonna do really well for that as well and uh something too that that i i think that uh really shows with this is not only is it going to sound good but it actually looks really good i'm actually really happy with how this turned out i think it looks cool i think it's going to be a cool addition and something too is when people watch into my studio they're gonna see these boxes hanging up on the wall and they're gonna be like whoa you know what are those i haven't really seen those before uh and then i'll just be able to kind of tell people like hey it's something my like custom design just like everything else in the room like those base traps uh i'll put a link in the description but i actually have a full video to show you how to make those base traps yourself uh but yeah that's the whole thing so all i'm gonna do from here is just hang it up on the wall and good to go and like i said before if you're not already be sure to subscribe to our youtube page that way you can stay up to date on videos just like the one you saw and then a bunch of cool stuff inside the two with mixing and mastering 
we literally have hundreds of things that show you different plugins and outboard gear and stuff like that. And you'll also be able to get tips and tricks directly into your mobile feed. Also, if you found this video useful or at least at the very least entertaining, hit that like button because like I said before, it really does help the channel grow. It really helps with the algorithm as well. And also check out those um, online mixing courses that Oracle and I have out, the Art of Vocal Mixing, the Art of Beat Mixing. Both of those have a link in the description below and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel right here so you can catch the latest tutorials on mixing, mastering, and production. And you can check out some of our suggested videos here, here, and here. And of course, if you're looking for premium loops and samples, you can find that at soundoracle.net. We got plenty to choose from.